Hello and welcome to the first video in the series about the zeta function. What is the zeta function? The zeta function is a very important function in numerical analysis. Okay, if you want to know more about numbers, then you have to know a lot about the Riemann zeta function. Actually, the most important part is about the distribution of the prime numbers. Okay, it actually gives you a an analytical way to count how many prime numbers exist until special big large number okay in order to understand this big deal question the Riemann hypothesis um, you can actually win one million dollars with that okay you can become a millionaire with just using your brains and solving this 150 years old problem and um, I thought about doing this uh, video because I didn't found anything similar to that on YouTube so this is the reason why I will also start from very basic stuff like convergence then we go step forward we will derive the Euler product representation then we will jump uh, until we derive the relationship between the zeta function and the uh, prime number zeta function we will actually show also that the in the reciprocal sum of the prime numbers is infinitely large and uh, results like this we will actually also calculate some values of the zeta function for odd uh, not odd numbers but even numbers odd numbers are something well, like a big problem until today and no one knows how to calculate them and we will do a lot of stuff and um, maybe at the end we will end up having the Riemann hypothesis and you will understand where it came from and what it actually means why it arises from this strange looking function but now <laughs> I talked so much but let's just have a look at the zeta function okay the zeta function is was first defined like this okay there are many many representations for the zeta function and this was the first representation that was known it's <clears throat> it's a result from Euler Euler has really worked a lot on this function he tried he actually was the one who found uh, the zeta function values for um, even numbers and then he tried to solve for odd numbers but this is a big problem and not solved until today Okay, maybe you will be able to solve this, but no mathematician is able to solve it. Um, yeah, actually this is the function, and we want to know what is the region of convergence of this function. Um, you might ask why is he doing such a lame thing in this first video. I'll just show you how to work with the zeta function, how to work with infinite sums, and then you will get a feel on what we will do later on. So let's just have a look at what I'm doing. I'm taking the first step that I'm doing is I'm taking the absolute value of this. Okay. And taking the absolute value of something, um, like a sum, okay, if you take the absolute value of a sum, then this is always smaller or equal to taking the sum over these uh, factors and their absolute value. Okay. This is uh, called the triangular inequality because it's coming from on the sides of a triangle. Two sides are always longer than one side, okay? So this is the, the origin of that. Now in the next step, what I'm doing is I'm taking the absolute value of one, giving me only one, so this didn't change. And now I only have in the uh, denominator, I have n to the s and the absolute value of that. So let's just go ahead and write down what we found out. We know this step. Now we want to evaluate the absolute value of n to the s, but it's, it's hard to take the absolute value of n to the s if you don't know what s is. So I'll uh, break up s. This is a complex number. Maybe I didn't mention that. This is a complex number. Euler only defined this for real numbers, and now uh, we will jump off or ahead and try to do this with complex numbers. It was actually Riemann who did this. This is the reason why it's called Euler Riemann zeta function. Now, every complex number can be written as x plus i y, okay, n to the x plus i y. Now I take the absolute value. Now, 
these uh, are just powers with n to the x multiplied with n to the i y so you can separate them this is just power law and then you have the absolute value and take the absolute value of a product is equal to taking the absolute value of the factors okay this is just a formula that I'm using you can just check this out with minus one multiplied with minus one this gives you one absolute value of one and you could get it the same way by just multiplying this and actually this is the, the way to prove it with minus one and so forth now we have this written down here okay now this is uh, the first part is pretty simple if you have a natural number and you take it to some real number what will happen is you will always end up having a real number again so this is just an exponential function which only takes positive real numbers the right hand side is a little bit harder to understand but we will do a little step in order to understand better so this is what we had before and I'm just writing this n to the i y as an exponential okay e to the i y logarithm of n so uh, actually this i y i y was on this n was the power of this n and this is just you take uh, the if you exponentiate something and then take the logarithm or the reverse order this uh, is an identical operation okay the only problem that we would have here is that n to the i y is a complex number and uh, the logarithm is not very well defined on that problems it's it's defined but we have uh, problems of periodicity but actually we would only get a factor of i of something and it would and not change our problem a lot. So what we see here is uh, the absolute vo value of e to the i y logarithm of n. Naturally this is a complex number on the unit circle and the unit circle has an absolute value of 1. So this is 1 and we end up having found out that the zeta function has actually a smaller or equal value than the infinite sum for n equals 1 to infinity 1 over n to the x. Okay, now you might say, wow, uh, wasn't that the definition of uh, the zeta function itself? No, we had here for the x, we had a complex variable s, so we reduced it to the case with a real variable x, and now we can slam all the formulas and all the theorems that we know about real sums, okay? Now, uh, this is our first result. Now, I'm using a very, very important theorem out of math. It's it's called the Cauchy integral or I don't know how he's spelled out in American English I think uh, some I heard that someone called him Cauchy but I don't think this is right I think it's Cauchy because he was a Frenchman so what we are doing is actually we are using the Cauchy, Cauchy integral theorem what it states is if you want to find out if a sum is converging or diverging what you have to look at is its corresponding integral okay and corresponding integral means you take the integral or instead of using uh, sum you take the integral sign and you pr replace the n by let's say t okay because if you plug in n equal uh, so for t if you plug in the n value you will end up having all the same values okay actually this is just an approximation of the sum and if the one is converging then the other is converging and if the one is diverging the other is diverging now integrating this function is pretty easy it's one over one minus x to the t one minus x so just you can you could just differentiate and see <coughs> sorry that this is true now we have this stuff and this is a little bit problematic first of all what you should should see is that x is not a, or it's not allowed that x is equal to 1. In the case that x was equal to 1, we would have the logarithm, because it's 1 over t dt, we would have the logarithm of t, and this is a diverging. So we know in the x equals 1 case, we have divergence. Now let's look at the other cases. If we plug in, infin so if we plug in 1, it doesn't give us any problem. We get 1 over uh, 1 minus x, so this is a value that we can calculate. But uh, calculating in infinity gives us a little problem, okay? If you have infinity to a positive number, what, what will happen is that it will become 
infinitely large, okay, this w would diverge. So uh, we have to look that this part is not positive. We have to make it negative. And in order to have this negative, if you write it down, it's 1 minus x shall be smaller than 0. If you just rearrange, then you get x should be greater than 1. And actually, remember that x was the real part of s, so we derive this equation. Okay, The real part of s has to be greater than 1. And actually, this concludes this lecture. This was the first lecture. And if you want to see my new videos coming up soon, then please um, subscribe my video so you can see the new videos on the zeta function. Okay? I hope you like this video and hope to see you next. Okay? See you guys.